Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning. God is good, and his loyal love is everlasting. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I want to welcome them in here to our service this morning, our, our live service this morning. We thank the Lord that he's allowed us to have this platform, this vehicle, to be able to teach and preach and declare the gospel, the good news, as Bishop Queen says, the happy news. The Ewangelion, glory to God. Yeshua's death, burial, and resurrection, and our soon coming King. I certainly appreciate everyone tuning in today, and I really hope you get something out of it this morning. Certainly be ashamed to get up and get to your Bible, to get to your laptop and computers and tune in and, and not uh, get anything out of this. So I'm going to do my very best to give you what God's given to me, to give to you that you can digest lean on, chew on, meditate on, speak on, and hold on to, and, and just carry it through this day and all through this upcoming week in the name of Yeshua. I continue to pray for you and solicit your prayers and any prayer requests. Uh, please uh, uh, just give us some notes uh, online and we'll, we'll uh, pray at the end of service today. And I do want to say this. I do want to lift up... Um, my wife to you, and we thank you for her healing completely in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. We thank the Lord for lifted by Brenda for her healing in the name of Yeshua. We lift up Sister Charlotte that is going to surgery on September the 8th. We thank the Lord for her healing in the name of Yeshua. Sister Charlotte Goldsberry, lift up on Esther to you, Lord of Minneapolis, for her recovery and healing. And, and everyone that's going through something, we thank the Lord for healing. He's the sovereign God. And God is a still in miracle working business. And I, I'll share something with you a little bit later on today. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Prayer is always the order of the day. Barukatai Adonai Elohim Malakah Alone. You're blessed with God because you're sovereign, you're king of the universe, you're Hamelech, you're omnipotent, omniscient, sovereign, monarch, ruler. You have no evil. You have no graduation in your excellency. You're just God. You're sovereign. You're Alpha. You're Omega. You know everything. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the word today. We thank you for taking over this clay tongue for your glory. We thank you, glory to God. Some of us are your willing vessels. Your, I, I say your Trojan horses in these last days. That's not ashamed of the gospel. Not ashamed of declaring your word. No matter what we're going through individually. We thank you, Father, that you continue to strengthen us from the crown of our heads and the soles of our feet that we'll keep on declaring, keep on preaching, keep on teaching, keep on witnessing. Glory to God, hallelujah. Keep on standing on your word in the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashi. We thank you, Father. We thank you this is our weapon of choice, the Bible, these 66 lights. We thank you that we put on the whole armor of God every day. Hallelujah. We cast our imagination every day. How we dwell in the secret place of the Most High every single day. How we all walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I feel no evil, but all is with me. So we just praise you. We glorify your name, Lord. Let this word large in the hearts of individuals that are hearing this word. We thank you that they pass it on to a family member, a colleague, or a loved one that needs to hear a crystal-centric message about the new birth. We just thank you. We praise you. We give you glory, give you honor, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And everyone say amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. This morning, we're going to be in the gospel, the book of Matthew. Thank you. Chapter number eight. And Bishop Queen would always say, listen to God's repeatables. The... Uh, Scripture I'm about to read is also can be found in Luke chapter 4, 37 through 41. Can also be found in Luke chapter number 8, verses 23 to 25. But we're going to be in Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. Open up your Bibles, please. The Gospel of Matthew. It's a very familiar portion of God's Word. We see that Yeshua. From verse 23 to 27 is calming the storm. But the Bible says in verse number 23, and when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, 
insomuch that the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, hmm, save us, we perish. And he said to them, Why are ye so fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Father God, in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. I will say this. My thought for today would be this. Yeshua calms the storm. I'll add on to this. Yeshua calms our storms in life today. Glory to God. You just keep on living. You might be in your 20s right now and think that everything is hunky-dory or peaches and cream. You get to your 30s and you got a few things going on. 40s and 50s and say, oh boy, how did this come to my life? In your 60s and get things coming into your life and you're dealing with glory to God. But I will say this. Keep on living but keep on believing. God is in control. He's the one, he's the one that rules nature. He's the one that rules the sea. I read an article yesterday. I think it's worth noting. I know a little bit about the art business. Kind of been around it for a number of years. I love art and I love the history. I've always been a, a history, history buff and um, have a chance to travel to different parts of the world and look at art and from Michelangelo to some of the great works around the world and museums and things of that nature. But the famed artist I'm referring to today is called Rembrandt. You should be familiar with him. Rembrandt Van Rijn. And he painted hundreds of skates, on the landscapes of, 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 on, on, on canvas. And some of them are worth literally tens of millions of dollars. But he only painted one seascape. He painted his own, his renowned Christ in a storm on the Sea of Galilee. He did this in 1633. There's a commentary in the Gospels by, by Gordon France. He, he, he tells this, this story of this special work of art. It's worth noting. Again, our theme is Yeshua calms the storm. A keen eye for ge geography and theology may pick up just a few interesting features in Rembrandt's description of the storm. He was painting in, actually in Amsterdam. He wasn't in Israel. He wasn't on the Sea of Galilee. He was in Amsterdam and, and not on the Sea of Galilee. And he didn't have the luxury of watching a ship toss in list in Israel. But he painted what he, he thought it might have looked like or might have, what it might have felt like. Mm -hmm. Further, although the Bible account, Yeshua tells, he, he was on board with the 12 disciples. But you look at the picture, there's 14 men on board, on the painting. Since Yeshua was already on board, we conclude the painting is a description of the storm he calmed with only his word in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. The writer of the commentary of the Gospel, uh, Coden Frank, says this. He describes the painting as depicting the panic-stricken disciples in their fishing boat trying to regain control of a vessel being caught in a sudden, in a violent, in a verse, a, a, a fierce storm on the Sea of Galilee. A huge, violent wave is crashing over the bow of, of this ship. And the sailors ripping from the boat and draws real close to the rocks. And matter of fact, uh, they can no longer control the ship. There are 14 people in the boat. The Lord Yeshua, his 12 disciples. Now this is the painting now from Rembrandt. And 14 individuals. Most likely Rembrandt 
himself, because he was known to paint himself into his pictures. One of the disciples is shown leaning over the edge of the boat, apparently seasick from vomiting. Do a little bit of history, uh, geography, it was probably Judas, since he was the only non-Galilean among the twelve disciples from the city of Kiriath, south of Hebron, in Negret of Judah. He was not accustomed to sailing in a boat. The Galileans were. He was seasick. Rembrandt's masterpiece probably hung in Boston. My wife and I originally were from New England. And there's so many, many museums in, in Boston that you want to visit. This is a true story. Boston Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in March of 1990, many, many years ago. Two men were posing as police officers. They stole along with a dozen works of art at this museum. And to date, today, none of the works have been recovered. It's fitting that one of the stolen works of art was Rembrandt. They cased the place. They knew what they were getting. Christ in the store. And we all know what it feels like to feel displaced and doubtful and fearful and anxiety. Glory to God. When we face storms of life, glory to God. Thankfully, like the disciples, we don't face those storms alone. And I say, mighty God is he. Hallelujah. And let me tell you what gives me comfort reading the Psalms. There's not a day that goes by that God puts on my heart the quote of Psalms. My favorite Psalm is Psalms 91. But I also quote other Psalms too. I'm reminded of Bishop Queen's favorite Psalm, Psalms 27. But it gives me comfort. Glory to God in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. The New Testament, glory, 27 books, 27 lights in the New Testament is rich in its use of Old Testament scriptures. Quoting and paraphrasing and alluding to Hebrew scriptures approximately 800 times. That should tell you something. God wants you to pay attention. Both Testaments are, are Christ. Center. And I will drop this on you too. I believe every message that a pastor preaches, teaches on, how to do it during the week, a Bible study, or during Sunday, which is which is about salvation, should always be crystal centric. Shouldn't be about name it and claim it, slam it again, what I'm gonna get. This is my season. It should be about Christocentric. It should be about, at the end of the day, being born again of water and of spirit. Because when it's all said and done, you take nothing with you. God has given us some of the amenities you enjoy of this life, but you take nothing with you. And he's put in man something. He put this, he put this longing in man. You could be the wealthiest man in the world. You could be a Hollywood star, a, a, a professional athlete at the highest level. Glory to God. Wealth beyond measure. But there's something this longing of the soul. Only Yeshua can fill that void. Glory to God in the name of Yeshua. That's why we preach a Christocentric message. Everybody needs the new birth. Sadly, most don't want to hear it. But there's a small flock of us that are still declaring it, still preaching it. Glory to God. And there's still folks still receiving it today. In the mighty name of Yeshua. The Old Testament points ahead to the coming Mashiach, Messiah. In the era of the New Testament, he has come. Jesus' disciples understand the scriptures. Yeshua said, Jesus said, in Luke chapter number 24, verse number 44, but the Bible says this, he said, all things, say it, all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms concerning me. New Testament writer quoted the book of Psalms more than any other book. 206 references to the Psalms punctuated.
punctuate the New Testament. Oh, glory. The book of Psalms is a hymnal for the children of Israel. It's interesting and it's, it's vital, it's imperative, it's important to note how the Psalms are intentionally arranged. Uh, there, are many, there, there are many English translations that include, indicate the book of Psalms consists of, of really five smaller books, case in point. Psalms 1 through 41 is book 1. Psalms 42 to 72 is book 2. Psalms 73 to 89 is book 3. Psalms 90 to 90, 106 is book 4. And lastly, book 5 is Psalms 107 to 150. Glory to God. Psalms 65. Glory to God. Elohim speaks this. Who still at the noise of the seas? The noise of the waves. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. And I want it's worth noting this. When we have a new heaven and a new earth, the church is gone and raptured. Glory to God. It's worth noting. There's not going to be any more seas. No more seas with a new heaven and new earth. Because the sea with the children of Israel, it, 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 it meant chaos as it rages. So in a new heaven and new earth, there'll be no more seas. There'll be calmness. Glory to God in the mighty name of Yeshua. No more chaos. Hallelujah. As the disciples aboard a, this, this, uh, this ill-fated boat marveled with, with, at the great calm, it's not hard for us to imagine them saying, the Bible says this in Matthew 8, 27, I read earlier, glory to God, what manner of man is this that even the winds in the sea obey him? Glory to God. They knew this calm was a wonder only Elohim Himself can work. I thank you, Lord, you are a mighty God. You're a sovereign God. You're, you're, you're a promise keeper. Glory to God. For the Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. You are preparing the table before me in the presence of my enemy. You lead me beside still water. You cover it over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Lord, thank you for your word. We give you praise and we give you honor. And Psalm 65 identifies God three times as Elohim. Verses 1, verses 5, and verses 9. We even read this flashes of this messianic hope. Same chapter, but in verses 2, 3, and 5. For the Bible says, O Thou, that thou hear it, pray. Know that God hears your prayer. Hallelujah. Even thee shall all flesh come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, thou shalt purge them away. Hallelujah. By terrible things in righteousness will thou answer us. O God, our salvation, of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of them that are far upon the sea. Only Elohim stills the noise in the seas, in the way. Only Elohim stills the noise in our circumstances and things that we're dealing with. Glory to God. Every single day in this life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I thank God without this word some of us wouldn't be here today. Hallelujah. Must would have lost your mind. Glory to God. Lost your life. Glory to God. But Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Even in the challenging times of life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That we can just get on our knees and, and call unto you. Glory to God. Because you know us by our name. And we can, we can, we can petition you. We can speak to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you answer prayer. How you might not get an answer immediately. But you will get an answer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God's doing the work. And I thank him for that. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Wonderfully, I, I say this. When we cross in, into the New Testament, Jesus, Yeshua, he stilled the noise of the seas and of the waves. The book of Psalms and, and the Gospels, the Ewan the Gospels, sing a, a, a beautiful duet. 
of the divinity of Jesus Christ, of God himself, in human flesh. He's sovereign. He's potentate of potentate. He's omnipotent, omniscient. I say this frequently. I'll say it again. He's very, very God. He's very, very man. That he does not have to let down his deity. Humanity and deity are fused together for redemption of mankind's soul. Hallelujah. My God is he. And I want you to say this to yourself. It's good to talk to yourself. Glory to God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God. Say it to yourself right now. I'm going to trust God to calm the storms in my life. We all got storms in our life that we're dealing with right now. But I'm going to trust God to calm the storm in my life. Storms in our life look different than they did for the disciples. Mm -hmm. The storm of Matthew 8 was an actual storm. Wind, waves, there was rain, glory to God. There was thunder, there was lightning. Certainly, we still have thunderstorms. But we also have storm shelters. We see that last week with the hurricane in Florida. They opened up all these shelters in Florida. People that were, had to leave their area, to leave their homes. Glory to God. We, we now have these things called umbrellas. Uh, we got vehicles to drive. We have windshield wipers. And uh, you can put sandbags to kind of stop the water from entering into your house and the storm effects. But windshield wipers cannot stop or if you're dealing with an illness. Glory to God. A family member. Family situation, uh, a, a financial situation, a legal situation. Uh, you've been you've been you've been terminated from your job, or, or if you're you're in the military, you're 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 deployed uh, 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 overseas. Glory to God! And a chaplain shows up at your door and delivers devastating news to the family. Glory to God! We roll through these storms in our life, but just as Elohim steals the storm for the summer, He steals our storms today. And I say, mighty God is he. Hallelujah. Had it not been God on my side, hallelujah, we wouldn't be here today. In the name of Yeshua, hallelujah. You hear the roaring waves and, and feel the stinging rain. And ask God to still the storm in your heart. God can. He's a promise keeper. But if, if he does not still the storm altogether, he can give us peace through it. Hallelujah. Let, for the Bible says this, let not your heart be troubled. Need to be afraid. God stills the storm. Let me give you something that happened to me yesterday. I wanted to wait until the day till I share this. Glory to God. On Thursday, I go before the Lord and I petition Him. And I said, the first scripture I said, Lord, He said, be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let my request, my petition be known to God. And I just had a litany of things I wanted to, to share with, this, with, with Elohim, with God. And I just went before him. I talked about a number of things that were going on in my life. And you know something? As we mature in life, sometimes God gives you a token, sometimes he doesn't. But I asked him for a token. And I said, Lord, you can do it any way you want. It could be through a prophetic word. It could be a phone call. It could be through my wife's. It could be through anything. Glory to God. And I just got up and went about my business. Yesterday, I, I get up, and, and uh, I'm outside, and I have to put my phone on the, the truck on the running board. And I forgot I had it there. I drove several miles, up the hill, down the hill, 40, 50 miles an hour. Glory to God. I got to my destination and realized I didn't have my phone. I said, Lord, I don't know what happened to my phone. I can't find it. Did I leave it in the garage? Did I leave it at the house? And I just said, Lord... Lord, I, I, don't, I, I don't want to lose my phone. I rushed back to the house, driving 50 miles an hour, up the hill, down the hill, making corners. I was rushing, glory to God. I pulled into the driveway, up the hill, down the hill. I pulled into the driveway. I go into the garage, no phone. I said, Lord, where did I lose it? Where, it could be anywhere. I looked to the running board, the phone's sitting right there. That's a miracle in itself. That's a miracle in itself. The phone was sitting right there. I went several miles. 40, 50 miles an hour. Only God can do that. 
One, two, four. I thank him that I got my phone. But that was the token that he showed me from my prayer on Thursday that I'm with you, that I got you, that I'm going to bring you through everything that you're going through. I have not forsaken you. I'm in control. I'm sovereign. Glory to God. And I just said, Lord, thank you. That was a miracle. Glory to God. And whatever you are thanking God for, whatever you believe in God for, he's still in the miracle working business today. And you give him glory. And you give him honor. In the name of Yeshua. Hamashiach. I just wanted to drop that on you. Glory to God. And I just, uh, I, even today, I'm just, <laughs> that's a miracle. But he gave me a token. He didn't have to, but he did. Hmm. I love how the Old Testament, how, how it dovetails together. In the New Testament, how they, they come together. 39 in the Old, 27 in the New, these 66 lights. And coming the, the sea is, is, is only in God's job description. Many fishermen and sailors have cursed the winds and waves and hoping to calm them to sure the safe passage. Glory to God. I'm from the New England area. And that whole area, uh, New England and Massachusetts, is shipping everywhere from Newburyport. And they had that famous movie, The, the Perfect Storm. And I grew up probably 15, 20 minutes away from there, right, right there in that area. Amen. But, but no matter how fervent or sincere, the best efforts could not dry a single raindrop. Nope. However, when, when Elohim speaks, oh, hallelujah. When God speaks, let me tell you something. Creation listens. Perhaps this is why the disciples, they were in absolute awe of Yeshua because they had wished away the waves and time passed, but the waves kept crashing in. But, but, but look at the conjunction here. But, 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 but Jesus spoke. The sea was as still as glass. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and, and I just want to digress for a moment. Let's just go back to the day when, when, when Yeshua, in our, in our text here, where he, he stilled the storm and to watch it unfold. Amen. Check this out. Amen. Yeshua had just set sail aboard a ship with his dozen disciples. These weren't the seven seas. It, it wasn't the Atlantic Ocean. It wasn't the Pacific Ocean. It wasn't the Indian Ocean. No, no, no. But the Sea of Galilee was unforgiving. At any moment, Glory to God. Without warning, this, the, the warm air from the water danced with the cold air from the mountains and produced an instant hurricane. Still happens today. But this, this night, all was calm. All was bright. Glory to God. And a handful of disciples, glory to God, were fishermen. So they knew, they knew the way around the water. They were experienced. But without any type of warning, oh glory, uh, they, they, they spiral from, from this calm, this, this relaxedness, cruise to rowing for their lives in a minute, just like that. Perhaps in, in, in a reverent quiet of, 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 of the synagogue while they're worshiping, glory to God, they, they heard the rabbi read of the noise of the seas and of the waves recorded in the 65th Psalms, but now they're living in it. Oh, glory, hallelujah. The disciples, they, they, they worked their rescue mission, but they were none safe, not at all. All the attempts to save themselves, they proved futile. Hallelujah. The disciples, they, 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 they were staggering around the ship and uh, trying to hold their balance, amen, to find Yeshua. Somehow he was sleeping at this moment. The rigors of ministry to hurting humanity that day before had left Yeshua exhausted. Let me tell you something. The Lord knows everything. He put on flesh. He knows he felt hunger. Glory to God, hallelujah. He felt being thirsty. He, he knows how we feel. He was tired. Glory to God. So you can never stand before the God of the Lord. You don't know what I've gone through. That's why he wrapped himself in flesh. But he was exhausted from the day before. Ministering. Glory to God. To humanity. Glory to God. They woke him up uh, with, this, with this question. But the Bible says, Master, or, or, or Rabbi, and care thou 
God that we, we perish, amen. But let me tell you about our sovereign God. He has, he, glory to God, he has authority over nature. Hallelujah. He's got authority over nature. Yeshua, he did care. He was on the boat with them, amen. So Jesus fully appreciated how to look at the danger they received, they were in. However, he knew what they did not know. He knew he could speak a simple sentence and calm the storm. That's why the Bible is clear. It says his word goes forth and never returns back and forth. Your weapon of choice is your Bible. You can, it's, it's written, it's logos. But when you need a word, on your situation, on your circumstance, it jumps off the pages. It's called a rhema. Glory to God. But when you speak God's word, hallelujah, and I'm talking about those of us. I'm not talking about anyone. I'm talking about those of us that are saved. Those of us that have received a new birth. Those of us that have been baptized in his name. Sons and daughters of God, amen. Filled with the Holy Ghost. You've got authority in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Oh, glory. Give me. Glory. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you. Hope you folks have been hearing me. I, I apologize with my, my microphone. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you. He's a good God. He's a sovereign God. He's a magnificent God in the name of Yeshua. He's a God keeping. He's a promise keeper. And I thank him. God used nature in the Old Testament to do his work. And, and, and we, we discovered, uh, we had a message, my message last week was on the transfiguration, but there was part of the message uh, uh, last week. We, we see that God may have called on the weather to help deliver his people out of Egyptian bondage. Amen. I spoke of that briefly last week. And, and God discomforted the Philistines with thunder during a battle. He can do whatever he wants to do. And the stars and the river fought against Caesarea and his army in the day of the book of Judges during another battle. Hallelujah. God has proven he can send forth a storm, but the disciples had not heard a story where he had stilled the storm. Amen. Glory to God. There's a novelist. His name is Charles Dudley. Amen. And I quote, this is what he says. He says, everybody talks about the weather. But nobody ever does anything about it. Glory to God. Yeshua, Jesus, he woke to the, to, to the, the, the cries, to the pleas of, of glory to God, of, of his faithless followers, his disciples. And they did not just speak about the weather. He, 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 he did not just speak about the weather himself. He spoke to the weather. He said, he said peace. There's a Hebrew word called shalom. It's got different meanings. It means prosperity. It means completeness, it means harmony, it means wholeness, it means welfare. But it, it, it's here, it's, it, we talk about tranquility. It says, shalom, 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 be still. And the wind ceased, and there was this great calm, amen. And this was no minor miracle. Yeshua spoke to a raging tempest, hallelujah, in the middle of the night. While he and his followers, glory to God, were in a fishing boat in the middle of a dark Sea of Galilee, he calmed the storm. And I say this, and I'm going to say it again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whatever you're going through right now, God is in the midst with you. He's a promise. Keep All you got to do is ask, and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Glory to God. God is a promise keeper. Hallelujah. You just, you make your petition to him. Glory to God. You speak to him. Glory to God. And, and just tell him what's going on. Hallelujah. But always started with praise and worship. And always ended with praise and worship. Glory to God. He'll, he'll answer you. And glory to God. You just got to be patient. He said, be still. Know that I am God. So I, I'm just, I'm just so thankful. Glory to God. That God is still, he, he's still in the, in the, in the answering business. Glory to God. He's still giving us tokens. Even, even if you've been walking with him for many, many years. Glory to God. He's still giving us tokens. Glory to God. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And I'm going to trust him. You're going to trust him. In your circumstances of life. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for protection. Thank you for your covering. Hallelujah. 
in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Last week was a violent hurricane that was experienced in Florida. Hit the coast, went up through Georgia, major devastation. Florida just seems to be get hit all the time. It's hurricane season. But I remember in 2004, it was known as the year of hurricanes hmm. in Florida. They had four hurricanes struck in Florida, called the Sunshine State, in one year, 365 days, they had four hurricanes. That one was called Hurricane Charlie. Hallelujah. It was the first to hit landfall that year. Now, I, I read a story yesterday that's certainly worth noting. And it talks about, they didn't give the names or anything like that, but it just talked about they're living in Florida. It talks about a young couple. They had just bought a house the year before, 2003. They were doing their best to kind of keep it intact through their first hurricane. This is the first hurricane they've ever experienced. And as, as the storm outside, it, 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 it was violent, amen. And they actually even heard shingles flying off the roof. And they didn't know what to do. They, they, they decided to ride it out. This is the first one. They didn't know what to do. They, they were afraid to do anything. But, but they, they were more afraid not to do nothing. Glory to God. So, so what the husband did, he, he, he went to the patio door and he held his ear up to the wall of glass just to see if he could hear how intense the rain was and the winds were growing and, and the door was, was shaking off, off its track. Glory to God, amen. And, and after the outer bands of, of the hurricane passed overhead, the eye of the storm was directly over them. While there was, there was this temporary calm, the worst is yet to come. The tail, we're told that the tail of the hurricane stings more than the head. This time it, it surely stung. And it says this, it was terrifying for this, 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 this young couple to sit through a storm inside of, of, a, of a thousand square foot house. Would have been paralyzing to sit through a storm inside of a 30 foot fishing boat on the water in the middle of the night. I wouldn't want to be there. And as the boat tossed and listed, the disciples thought they were, they were as good as gone. I'm, we ain't going to make it through this one. These were experienced fishermen. They had never dealt with this before, amen. But Yeshua was, was on board the boat. Mighty God is he, hallelujah. He calmed the storm. And doubtless lives, storms are terrifying. Glory to God. We deal with them every, you just keep on living. It, your life is not always peaches and cream. Just keep on living. Hallelujah. But he calmed the storm. Hallelujah. hallelujah. He's our comfort. That Yeshua is with us. He calls us by his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's a promise keeping God. Amen. All you got to do is call unto him. Those who are heavy laden, he says, I'll give you rest. Glory to God in, in the name of Yeshua. Hamashiach. And sometimes he calms one hmm, or the other. Sometimes he calms both of them. Hallelujah. But know this. He's in control. We can trust him in the storms. The Bible says he's not given us a spirit of fear, the power and love of a sound mind. Glory to God. And yes, storms are terrifying. They are. Sometimes you've got to catch your breath. Sometimes your blood pressure is going up. Sometimes your, your chest gets heavy. It's like someone is stepping down on your chest. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you you, 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 you got to... You got to just take a step back and, and it's almost like you're hyperventilating. You just say, Lord, calm me. Glory to God. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. But I give him glory and I give him praise. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. God is, I, I just, I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you're shifting the atmosphere for our favor. Thank you, Father, glory to God. How to, we're seeing things change in the realm of the spirit. Thank you, Father, glory to God, hallelujah. you're a God of yes and amen. Thank you, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, your word is true. Hallelujah. All we got to do is decree it. All we got to do is declare it. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, glory to God, hallelujah. Look, look after this storm in, in, in our text here, glory to God. After the storm, Yeshua rebuked in the disciples. Look at, look at their response, amen. I'm almost done. 
I've got a couple more minutes here. In, in nearly the same breath that Yeshua rebuked the wind, he rebuked the fellow disciples, these, these fellow seafarers in the boat with him. These were seasoned fishermen. Jesus asked them, why are you so fearful? How is it you have no faith? For, for the Bible says in Mark chapter number 4, verse number 40, in Mark's gospel, the disciples had already witnessed Jesus deliver a demonic in Capernaum. Heal Peter's mother-in-law from a fatal fever. Touch a leper and heal him. Heal and forgive a paralytic who was lowered through the roof and restore a man's withered hand while they were in awe that Yeshua could heal others, they're not sure he cared for them enough to save their lives. God cares for you. He's got your back. Hallelujah. You may not feel it. You might pray. It might not feel any different. That's where faith kicks in. For the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's an evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hallelujah. And God is so good, he even gave me another token. I've been meditating on Hebrews 11.6 and I heard it through a message earlier yesterday and repeated today. Hallelujah. God is a rewarder. Hmm. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. But he's a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just diligently seek him. He's going to reward you in due time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. But he cared for them enough to save their lives. Amen. But he did. And this miracle on, on Galilee's stormy sea proved Yeshua was able and willing to heal. Amen. It also proved how quickly faith can be shaken. Glory to God in the name of Yeshua. Even today, there are times where you're going to be shaken. Things just change. Glory to God. Stay in his word. Glory to God. You need this more than your necessary food. Stay in the word of God. So many people get saved. God has delivered them from the world. Delivered them from death. Got born again. Baptized in Jesus name. Got filled with the Holy Ghost. And then want to leave. Hallelujah. And this want to hear another voice. And that's fine. But make sure you stay in the same persuasion. Glory to God, hallelujah. You need this, hallelujah. And it takes a lifetime to get this. You gotta keep on reading, keep on reading, keep on studying, keep on praying. Glory to God, hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Come. You can read a scripture a thousand times and God can keep giving you fresh revelation. You need this. And you will not make this journey successfully Glory to God without Yeshua on your side. Hallelujah. So stay in this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua. How can you hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he's been sent? Glory to God. So those that are tuning in right now, listening to my voice, God has sent you to hear this word. And I'm going to do my very level best to give you what God's given me. And I thank you, Father, for the Pentecostal apostolic doctrine. Hallelujah. About being born again. Hallelujah. How to accept a man be born of water and spirit cannot enter the kingdom of God. It's for it's saving of the soul. Glory to God in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Everybody needs this. Glory to God in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Everybody needs this word. Amen. They looked at one another, disciples, and asked this, 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 this telling question. Amen. In Mark chapter number 4, verse number 41. And, Amen. It indicates they, they, didn't, they didn't understand who, who Yeshua was. And, and they feared exceedingly. That's what the Bible said. And they said one, one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Glory to God. Him. He, the, the, their question betrays their, their, their misunderstood theology. Amen. They, they thought Yeshua was just a man who had come to do a work for God. Glory to God. In the name of Yeshua. No, 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 no. Let me, let me drop this down on you. Let me tell you who, who, who our Elohim is. Glory to God. Hey, uh, he, says, he says, I am your, your purchased possession. That's what he says. 
Yes, he does. Amen. I, 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 I deemed it necessary to wrap himself in, in human flesh that he might have, have, have hemoglobin running through his body every 23 seconds. Let me tell you who our God is. Amen. The one, one day that he might march up to Golgotha. Amen. And allow somebody to pierce him in his side that he, that he may, have, may purchase our redemption. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give his mighty name the glory for what he has done. In the mighty name of Yeshua, God Almighty, Amen. Controller, Amen. Creator, Sustainer, dropped down out of from eternity and time, wrapped himself in flesh. Glory to God, Amen. That He might purchase my soul. Hallelujah. Brought me back. I was sold. Hallelujah. Into slavery. Hallelujah. Sold into sin. Sold into degradation. But thank God, I say Toda, Ata Yeshua, I say Yada, I lift up holy hands to him. Thank you, God, for the ransom, hallelujah, of Yeshua. Precious blood, my soul, my soul, precious blood, paid the price, his precious blood. That's who Yeshua is. Glory to God, you got to know who your Savior is. He's, he's our Goel, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God in the mighty name of Yeshua. He's a second Adam. And I give him glory. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Glory to God. He is Elohim. He come in human flesh to do the work to save humanity. And I thank him every single day. Glory to God. He saved the disciples from the storm. And he later saved them from their sins. Glory to God. All have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. But the Bible says if a man confesses his sins, he's faithful and just to forgive. Glory to God every single day. Glory to God in the name of Yeshua. I'm going to worship him. Glory. I'm going to bow down to him. I'm going to give his name glory and praise every single day for what he's done. We're still here today. You're still breathing today. You're still inhaling and exhaling today. You can still see. You can hear. You can reason. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank God he's provided an economy for you to provide for your family. He's got a roof over your head, clothes on your back. Glory to God. Vehicles to drive. He's given us some amenities to enjoy while we're here. Glory to God. But everything belongs to him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father. Glory to God. That you rescued us. Hallelujah. That you wooed us with your patience and your grace and your mercy. And that one day we heard that clarion call. Hallelujah. We crossed that Rubicon never to go back again. And we said yes to your will. Yes to your way. Glory to God in the mighty name of Yeshua. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to worship him. Brother Stone, I'm going to worship him. I'm going to worship him. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Although, uh, glory to God. None of the gospel writers tell us how the disciples responded. Once the boat was beached, they got back to shore. Let me tell you something. Two demonics who appeared to be untamable. Hallelujah. After time, ran to Yeshua and worshipped him. The storm brewing on the Sea of Galilee was just a drizzle compared to the storm brewing within the city limits of Gadara. Hallelujah. But, but look at the conjunction here. But God. But Yeshua was about to prove he's greater than the devil. For the Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And he always causes me to triumph. I can say that because of the hope of glory. The very essence of God, the Holy Ghost, Dwells inside of me. I'm no match for the devil by myself. Glory to God. No match at all. But those of us born again of the water and the spirit, we got the very essence of God. And God gives us the victory. In other words, the Bible says we have all authority. He's given us all authority in the mighty name of Yeshua. We put the enemy under our feet by the precious blood of Yeshua. I plead the blood. I speak the blood. How to, his, his hemoglobin is special. It's effervescent. He said, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Thank you for your blood, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No devil, no demon, no imp, no witch, no warlock, no hex. Glory to God. The devil himself hallelujah, is under our feet in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. I've seen demons tremble at that name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just speak, speak in his name. Yeshua. Glory to God. Yeshua. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. And on that day, the disciples had an all-access pass to witness Yeshua calm the storm that threatened two demon-possessed men, just as miraculously, yet as he calmed the storm that threatened him. 
Jesus truly is yod heh vav he is Lord and God. He's the God-man, and we see him as such. The only response is to worship him, to give him praise, and to give him glory, and to give him honor in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMem. Let me put some flesh and bone on him. Let me quit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's not enough paper that exists in all the trees of the world, in all the forests of the world, to write all the miracles that Yeshua had worked. Mm -mm. For the Bible says in the Gospel of John, states in John 21, 25, here's what the Bible says. He says, the world, in other words, in the Hebrew tongue, ha-halom. The world itself could not contain the books that should be written. We will not exhaust in one message or one Bible study. All the Bible tells us about the miracles. But we have been given a glimpse into seeing Jesus for who he is. He is the sovereign, omnipotent, potentate God who performed the specific miracle that the Old Testament identifies as something only the Lord can do. He calmed the stormy seas. And in a miracle, he even walked on water. As I said before, that was a miracle that God showed me yesterday. That was a token I asked for. Yes, I got my phone back. You don't want to lose your phone because all your information is on there. You don't want someone else getting a hold of it. They got technology that people can hack into your phone. All these things. Glory to God. That, I was so grateful that was there. But the miracle was it was sitting right on the running board of the truck. And I went several miles, 40, 50 miles an hour, even faster coming home, uphill, downhill, taking rights, taking lefts. Glory to God. And it was there. Only God did that. Mighty God is he. We know, that all, we know this. Not all storms are in boats or in seas. Let me finish with this. There's a writer of a story I read yesterday. It doesn't give the names of these individuals, but it's worth noting. And the, the gentleman says this. I think he might have been a pastor. He says, when my wife and I learned, much to their surprise, that our family was in a crisis, it seemed to me that we came to the end of our rope quickly. The crisis involved, this is how the story goes. And, and again, we don't know their names, but the crisis involved is the illusion of a marriage of one of, of our children. We did everything we could to think to try to, to intervene and so the divorce would be avoided. And nothing seemed to help. He said that tensions developed not only between us and our in-laws, but between us and our, even our parents. The storm raged with ever-increasing fury, as the story goes. And in this, the writer says this, it seemed to me that my ministry had come to an end. So I think he was a pastor. Since our family was falling apart, what credibility would I have left? Who would want to listen to anything I had to say? As I sat in our home one Saturday afternoon, he said the phone rang. He said I didn't recognize the caller's voice. He identified himself. He was calling about 2,000 miles away. I didn't know him. He said God had awakened him during the night about two weeks before this, his call and strongly impressed my name upon him. Only God can do that. Hmm. Only God can do that. Hmm. The omnipotent, omniscient one. God had given him two verses of scripture for me. The first one, he says this. In Isaiah chapter number 43, verse number two, he says, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through fire, you won't be burned nor shall the flame scorch you. He said he was amazed because he, he, he was a student of Scripture. And he realized these words came, were written to Israel. But it actually perfectly described his situation. God knows that, that he knows exactly how to speak to your circumstances, your situation. But God, but there was a second verse. Same book, Isaiah 45. I love Isaiah. But verse 17, he says, But Israel shall be saved by the Lord. And that's capitalized. 
Lord Yod He Vav He. It's the technogrammaton. Lord Yod He Vav He, with everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed or disgraced forever and ever. One thing I, I say about the Word of God, we won't be ashamed. Those of us that believe in this Word, holding on to God's Word, won't be ashamed. We won't, we won't made look stupid for believing in this Word. Glory to God. It don't matter what people think about you. Glory to God, hallelujah. You just keep on believing, keep on trusting. He won't make us look stupid. Just trusting in Him, believing in His Word. He's a covenant-keeping God, hallelujah. If God loves Israel, and He does, He loves you and I today. He's no respect of a person. Regardless of the kind of storm that we face, He's able to speak peace, tranquility. And I decree and declare this tranquility and peace right now in the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, I thank you, Father, the atmosphere is shifting in our favor. My God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. My God always causes me to triumph. He knows the way that I take. Hallelujah, glory to God in the mighty name of Yeshua. I speak this word, I decree it, I declare it. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. You're my rock, you're my shield, you're my strong tower. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Yeshua, hum. thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua. Hmm. The sea might not be named Galilee, but when the waters calm, our response will be much like the disciples. Lord, thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I give you glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. May the Lord bless you. May God keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Give you shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, before we, we close out, I want to I wanna touch and agree. First of all, we thank you for tuning in today. We appreciate you tuning in today. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. We thank God. I want to lift up. And let's just raise your hand to your screen there, it could be your phone, it could be your laptop, your computer. Uh, I want to lift up uh, Brenda Brown for her healing in the mighty name of Yeshua. She's now eating again. We thank you, Yeshua. I don't care. Yes, we have doctors, we have nurses, we have hospitals, but at the end of the day, Lord, you're sovereign. You're in control. We thank you that her appetite is coming back again. We thank you for that, Lord. We lift up Aunt Esther to you. Glory to God, recovering from a stroke. We thank you for her recovery, for her rehabilitation. We lift up the Wilson family. Hallelujah. My Uncle Bill, glory to God. In the name of Yeshua, my cousins, the Wilson family. In the name Pat and Tim and Greg and the family, in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. I lift up my mom, Anna Mae. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to bless her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, her business, her economy. Uh, what she does, glory to God, where she lives, and all these things. Lift up my, my mother-in-law, Sister Phyllis, Lord, supplying all of her needs, according to your riches and glory. Hallelujah. My wife's my wife friend, Elizabeth, lift her up. Lift up a Shayla and the children, Zari and the family. Hallelujah. Billy, glory to God. Zari, the whole family, loved ones. I lift everyone up. Hallelujah. That's been part of this ministry. Glory to God. Glory to God in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for for your support and fellowship. Severin, I, I appreciate you tuning in. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for shooting out messages every day, for encouragement. We appreciate that. We, we, I can, and I want to say that I continue to solicit everyone's prayer. As, as I pray for you, you pray for us, because prayer is always the word of the day. Vaughn, I got your back. I continue to lift you up. Amy and I can lift you up in your family. Keep on doing what you're doing. God's got your back. Keep on passing this message on. Keep on praying for your children, your loved ones, people you come in contact with. Be that light. Hallelujah. And don't be ashamed of the gospel. Glory to God. And then you, you say, what am I going to say? Give me your testimony, what God's done in your life. Sister June, we thank God. Glory to God. They didn't know what was going on with you, but they figured it out through the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank the Lord. How for Sister June. We thank you for blessing her business and blessing her health and strength. I lift up Sister Helen. Glory to God. Sister Helen, we thank you for your support. We continue to lift you up in the name of Yeshua. Lift up your whole family, Josiah, the whole family, grandchildren, loved ones, 
people you come into contact with, we lift you up in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I lift up my mom, Anna Mae, and Billie Jean, and Kelly, uh, Ian, uh, my mother-in-law. We lift everyone up, and I lift up people that I work with. We thank you that, that I work with people that have integrity. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for opening doors and opportunities, glory to God, that I didn't see coming. And I thank you, Father, glory to God, that you brought us into a wealthy, prosperous place, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and financially, that's beyond measure, that you're blessing us to be a blessing for others. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord face, uh, make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you, give you peace. And everyone repeat after me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. What I say to one, I say to all, Watch, fast, and pray, and be a great witness for Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Have a great week, have a great day, in Yeshua's name, amen.